Hello, and welcome to this late night, midweek, Will's fifth quarter special Facebook Live. I'm your host, Will Farlow, and I apologize that this one's about seven minutes late. I uh, had some technical difficulties, so um, just bear with me there. Um, a lot to talk about. The uh, Bears just had um, a good game this past Sunday, uh, not too long ago, just a few days ago. Uh, they beat Arizona Cardinals on the road. That was a very slim win. Um, it was a very interesting game, and we're going to get into that. Illinois State Volleyball, they're coming home this weekend, so we're going to talk about them a little bit. And the White Sox, the Cubs have some interesting things going on right now. Uh, Hawk Carrollson just retired, so we're going to talk about him a little bit. And uh, the Bulls are getting set for preseason action. We're going to talk about them. It's been a while since we talked to the little Bulls uh, basketball. And uh, there's a lot coming up. Now, something interesting I want to share with the uh, viewers. I'm just going to take out a copy of it right here. This newspaper, The Vedette, uh, on campus of Illinois State, it uh, you know, helps students keep in touch with things and everything on campus, campus life. There's an interesting story in here I want you guys to hear about. It's something you're going to be familiar with since you're on right now. They did a story on me. And I'm just going to read a quote that they quoted me on. That's really uh, was my words. But, um, you know, they asked me about kind of like what my hopes are for the show moving forward. And uh, just like about the catchphrase, so I, you know, of course, mentioned the catchphrase. And I said, my hope moving forward is for people to go to the various social media pages uh, of the show and post their favorite sports moments so I can try and incorporate their choices on the show. And uh, they asked me what I want to do moving forward, you know, because I'm a college student, just uh, continuing my career and whatnot. And uh, I said, after I graduate from ISU, I plan to work, uh, find work in broadcasting sports. And uh, being an analyst and reporter as I work my way up to the broadcasting area. So, just right off the bat, there, um, it, it, it was exciting. You know, I mean, you go to class Monday morning and you have people asking about you. Uh, uh, if the listeners are interested here, I'm in a uh, bowling class. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, bowling's a fun thing to get better at, especially. Um, so, I, I see there's two people on right now. Um, there were two people on there. Um, Please join uh, into the video. I know it was a little bit late, but uh, come check it out. I'm going to be on probably only 30 minutes tonight. I have uh, lots of homework to work on, so I apologize for that. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about the Bears first. So just comment your thoughts on the Bears, you know, what you thought about the game. It was a very close one. I did not. Now, that Cardinals defense is pretty good. You know, they're. You know, new head coach Steve Wilkes, uh, former cornerbacks coach of the Chicago Bears and with the Carolina Panthers, he's obviously got experience with defense. And that matches up really good with a guy like Patrick Peterson because, you know, Wilkes is just going to really help him out, you know, no, no doubt about it. And I think it's just interesting the way that Bears game went. And – you know, I caught it, I believe, the when the Bears were down 14 to nothing. Uh, I didn't catch it uh, until then. I was at the Fell Hall World Series. Now, if anyone doesn't know about that, the Fell Hall World Series uh, is between, you know, Fell Hall School of Communication at Illinois State University, uh, the main building for com majors and such, and uh, TV10 and Z&D, uh, where I work, WZ&D, the radio station. And uh, they're pretty close to each other in the, uh, you know, building, lower level Fell Hall, as people call it. And I played this year as a uh, UTA director in the Fell Hall World Series, and we won a very close game. Uh, we won by a few runs, uh, 15 to 12, I believe, or it was 15 to 11. Uh, whoever's on here can correct me. Nick Damiani, who just joined Nick Landy. Good to have uh, two former coworkers of mine on tonight. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Um, Damiani, if you got a comment about the Fell Hall World Series, uh, go ahead and leave one. Uh, just a little bit of a tangent here. And uh, – your uh, host here, yours truly, Will Farrell here, got uh, a hit. I got a single, and uh, my walk-on music is uh, based off the poster behind me, Rocky. So uh, the Rocky theme was in the background. Uh, I'm pretending to call my shot like the babe there, so uh, Babe Ruth. And um, it was a good time. Uh, 
and uh, just do it, playing that in that game with my, all my coworkers, uh, getting a chance to play some softball. And uh, TV 10 played pretty well, so credit to them as well. But uh, just a good time. And uh, when I came back uh, to my apartment, I did not expect the Bears would be down 14 nothing. My prediction was, of course, the Bears winning against the Cardinals uh, by a favorable margin. And I didn't see coming, you know, that start of the game, of course. You know, the, if the Bears offense – didn't find the consistency they wanted, It uh, they obviously were going to get points. And uh, the defense kept them in that game, in my opinion. I'm not going to say the offense is in trouble yet because we're still, we're still yet to see the complete offense set of what Matt Nagy and uh, Mike Helfrich are working on and uh, Coach High stand with the O-line. Now, we're seeing signs of it, but – it's only been three weeks of football. Uh, you know, we still have a lot of uh, football here in 2018 in the NFL, and I'm uh, just curious to see what the Bears are going to do. And Mr. Zach Wilson's on me as well. He played in the Fell Hall World Series with me also. Played a very good game, by the way. Zach, shout out to you and the rest of uh, the team I played with. for WZD. We won the championship. So um, I know you you got some comments about the Bears there, Zach. So just uh, leave your uh, thoughts. And uh, – just, you know, looking at the game, you know, it, we saw something we might have foreshadowed, could have expected. It was – okay, thank you, Zach, uh, the first comment of the night. And just what the Bears are doing um, I think is really great. But the question, in my opinion, and a lot of, you know, listeners and fans are going to have this question, what what's going to happen with the receiving? You know, uh it, from a fantasy perspective, too, Mitch isn't getting the points people want. He's Mitch is still learning the offense, and that's no question about it. He worked extremely hard, from what we could tell, you know, in training camp, off season, you know, working with Matt Nagy and uh, the new uh, offensive side uh, staff, uh, coaching staff of the Bears. But just just even looking at some of the reports here on the Bears page right now, you know, the offense is still getting its thing together, and that's why it even helps. So much more that the Bears got a guy like Khalil Mack. The defense is playing the way they are. One of the best now, right now, in the National Football League. And that defense is going to be tested as we look. This Sunday, the Bears are playing the Fitz Magic Ran. I, I like I like that nickname people have given Fitzpatrick. We said tragic Fitz Magic. Guys getting a little more of a chance here in the NFL right now. Uh, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come to Chicago. Uh, Soldier Field, noon kickoff against the Chicago Bears. So I'm curious to see, you know, and they were talking about this uh, with the Bucks. pretty good defense. You know, you have guys like uh, JPP, who was with the Giants most of his career, lost a bit of a finger there. It's very controversial. But, uh, you know, Chris Conte, a former Chicago Bear, coming back to Chicago uh, in a return there. So that's a interesting one. He was in a very controversial play there. And uh, – we have our first question. Zach Wilson leaves a very good question here for us this evening. Who would Zach Wilson says, who would you rather see the Bears face, Jameis Winston or Ryan Fitzpatrick? Well, Zach, I have heard just from some sources, you know, seeing on Bleacher Report and everything, Ian Rappaport has confirmed that Fitz Magic will probably be the quarterback starting. The reason being probably is, Jameis Winston hasn't had a lot of reps with the team, and you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The record you have coming into this game right now, you want to keep that going. And I think Fitzpatrick is fitting more with the offensive players they have starting right now. Uh, Deshaun Jackson and him really have a good rapport. Uh, O.J. Howard, do people expect the Cameron Bray to be the starter this year? But O.J. Howard is just coming into his own. You know, like when when you first saw him drafted the Bucks, you're like, okay this guy's going to probably eventually start, but we didn't know when, you know, same thing with Mr. Biskey when, you know, he start finally got some starts and, uh, you know, became a starter last year through the Mike Glennon situation, but it's just curious. And uh, a lot of people are going to have their own views on this. So I welcome hearing the various perspectives on it. The bears receiving is an interesting question. Anthony Miller is probably not going to be available for week four. We hope the bears rookies. Okay. Cause we, we hope we can see some more of that electric offense we saw in his tape. And I want to see more of what we saw in week one in that 
Solid pass Mitch made to Allen Robinson, uh, four-year, $72 million receiver. Uh, we got formerly the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Taylor Gabriel is a really interesting player. I think he's a really great route runner, but I like how Matt Nagy is using him in the backfield a little bit. You know, it really um, helps the Bears' offense because whenever you see a really great offense, like the Patriots or what the Chiefs are doing, you keep the defense guessing. And that's what they need to keep doing, I think, Matt Nagy and Mike Helfrich and uh, the offensive side of the football have been already doing that, but I want to see some more. You know, we have 14 more weeks of Chicago Bears football. I want to see some of that. I think this team could stay in first place. I have the utmost confidence in Chicago Bears staying in first place. You know, they are off to a good start, but it's kind of like Matt Nagy was saying in the media. You just got to keep it consistent. You know, they have a game plan, you know, or mentally especially, which I think is important when, you know, a new coach comes to the program like the Chicago Bears – a uh, younger team here, and that's going to be important for them moving forward. Matt Nagy talked about how it's important for them not to worry about a win or loss after, but, uh, you know, focusing on that next game. They're focused on the next game, you know, when they're supposed to be, and even when, e- even earlier than expected by some teams. So, as I mentioned, the Chicago Bears host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week four, and uh, they'll have a bye week after that. So, Big game for Chicago, I think. Their first home game they won, but that was just by a touchdown against Seattle. And uh, they played Seattle really good, in my opinion. But if you're Matt Nagy and the Bears, you want to show fans, Ryan Pace, front office, that this offense has improved. And they are improving each game. We've seen that game in and game out. You know, after that one-point Packers loss, I'm not going to get into that. That's a very uh, interesting conversation, in my opinion, as – Joey Dwyer and I formally mentioned on episode 18 last week of Will's Fifth Quarter Special. Uh, the Bears are off to a really good start, in my opinion. And it, had the Bears not lost that Packer game, uh, we'd see a 3 0 Bears team right now coming in uh, against Tampa Bay at Soldier Field. But uh, we'll see what happens. And now we are going to go into the Chicago White Sox. Just touching on it right now, we talked about it in episode 18. Of Will's fifth quarter special, Hawk Harrelson has officially is officially retired now in his uh, career broadcasting in baseball, especially uh, in his time with the Chicago White Sox. Uh, and just looking at some of the scores here right now, the White Sox are they're at that point in the year where they're saying, okay, you know, we have X amount of games left. We're in a rebuild year two. Uh, this is kind of the point right now where the White Sox are, you know, address getting already addressing. Uh, plans for the offseason, players are targeting, uh, where this rebuild's going to go. And I'm going to give you guys a bit of a hint on this. I'm trying to get an interview uh, for the next episode, uh, 19 of Will's Fifth Quarter Special, uh, to go with another interview I have planned. I was planning to mention that to embarrassing, but forgot to there. Uh, Zach's really good question uh, threw my thought off there a little bit. But um, Mark Grody, who was originally supposed to be on episode 18, uh, is graciously coming back on the show a second time as a guest appearance uh, for episode 19. And uh, me as the host, uh, Mark's a great uh, sports perspective, a great a man, and just uh, someone that's really great to talk sports with, uh, almost like talking to somebody uh, you've known for a long time. And he's that type of individual, and uh, what he brought to the show his first time out and back in episode 12, it was, it was just incredible, the insight he was able to bring to the table in his first year as a Chicago Bears reporter, and uh, but we get to talk regular season now with Mark, so it'll be even more exciting to talk about that. We could hear the insides of the receivers, Khalil Mack, and so forth. So I see we have a few more uh, viewers. Uh, Mike Rubio, uh, student body president over at Illinois State, does an incredible job out there. Shout out to Mr. Rubio. Uh, my old coworker from Lansing Pell Works, uh, Mrs. Gleason's on. Will Hatzel back from uh, St. Anne's Catholic School, and. My friend Casey, fellow diehard White Sox fan, Casey, I know you've been waiting for this. We are talking the Chicago White Sox. So, Casey, I know you had some thoughts on the White Sox game. I know you went to a White Sox game. You told me a while back. So, please leave your comment about uh, what you're thinking about the team, what you don't like about the team, uh, what you think about Michael Kopech's injury. That's a going to be a continued topic we talk about. But just looking at the current score here, the White Sox are facing – they're hosting Cleveland in another matchup tonight. It's now the middle of the fourth. Due up for the White Sox is Omar Nevarez. Pretty good catcher, in my opinion. Good lefty bat. 
Uh, but the hitter I'm paying attention to who's in the hole coming up is Daniel Palka. They've claimed him the nickname Palkamania. I love that nickname. Daniel Palka is an incredible player. He gets you excited when he comes up to bat. And I, I've been talking to people on campus about it. You know, my dad, uh, just Joey Dwyer, who's on the show, uh, as I mentioned, episode 18. Uh, good old Steve Cease, so our faculty advisor over WZND. I've talked to a lot of Cub fans even uh, about this down there and just wherever I am the last few days or so. And you can compare Palka as the White Sox version of Kyle Schwarber. Now, I don't mean the outfielder Kyle Schwarber or the catcher. I mean the DH piece where people have compared him to – you know, fitting in a AL uh, team's lineup. And that's what Palka is. And just looking at the score right now, the White Sox who are at a respectable record for a team uh, in a rebuild situation. They are 62-95 on the years uh, closing out 2018 here at this point. Uh, the Cleveland Indians who won the division title in the AL Central, so they're the division champs in the AL Central this year once again. They are up five to nothing on the White Sox. Cleveland's at an 88 and 69 record on the year. Uh, Cleveland got one run in the first, a run in the third, and three in the fourth. And the White Sox still have yet to get a hit or a run in tonight, as Shane Bieber is pitching a solid game for the Cleveland Indians. Just looking at some of the stats here: Josh Donaldson, two walks for the Tribe. Michael Brantley and Jose Ramirez as well. The lead hitters for the Tribe tonight. Edwin Encarnacion, a solid three for three. Jose Ramirez, one for two with two runs scored. 0-1 for Brantley, but with a run scored. And one for three, an RBI and a run scored from their star shortstop, Francisco Lindor. Now looking at the White Sox right now, they don't have any hits. Uh, last strikeouts tonight for the uh, south side. Uh, the pitching right now, they have Jace Fry in, who uh, pitched an inning. Uh, Aaron Bummer pitched three innings, and uh, Ryan Burr won. Aaron Bummer, the lead uh, strikeout total there. He has four strikeouts, two for Fry and none for Jay Ryan Burr. Now going on to the north side of town. I'm sure Casey and the listeners here are not excited about that. And we have a special guest joining the Facebook Live. You remember him from episode 17 of World Fifth Quarter Special. He did a <clears throat> excuse me. A little hydration there, folks. Sorry about that little frog in the throat. Anthony Ferretti, who was on episode 17, who did a very good job as guest co-host. I'm sure you all enjoyed his insight on Illinois State sports and professional sports. Just looking at the Cubs right now, they're up. I'm, yeah, they're up 6-2. to two. They lost to the the other night. Uh, top of the fifth, uh, runner on first. And the Cubs are on their way right now. But the lingering question, we're going to talk about it this week on episode – or correction, uh, next week on episode 19 uh, of Will's Fifth Course Special, which will hopefully feature not just the greatness of Mark Grody, but we got to put something else with it. You know, I, I've uh, heard a lot of good comments about the show, and you guys want more, uh, you know, more favorite guests and everything. So I'm going to do the best I can to bring that to the table to uh, help the show grow. And we have some more guests coming. WZND. Faithful, joining in tonight. Got to love that here on the campus. Claudia and uh, Rada, glad to have you both on here with me. And uh, Jose Quintana, former Sky White Sox pitcher for the Cubs, in uh, the 6-2 lead so far the Cubs had, is pitching with four strikeouts and has given up two earned runs in four innings pitched. Now going in to the topic a lot of fans have waited for, it is Illinois State time on the Sports Facebook Live here this evening. We are going to talk the Illinois State volleyball team first. They are at an exciting point in conference play. They're coming home, folks. They're playing their first set of home games, not just in conference play, but since that exhibition. Now, a lot of people don't remember this. It was way early in the season. Sometimes a lot of people don't pay attention to these. They had an exhibition game against DePaul University on Doug Collins court back in August, on August 30th, and it was a good old clean sweep. Redbirds got the broom out there. They got the sweep. And if you see Coach Leah Johnson's team, or as she likes to be called, Correction Coach Johnson there, um, this team does not give up easy. They've played a lot of really good tough points. Just to recap it here a little bit from earlier in the season, 
Uh, they played a four-set loss match against Georgia, who Georgia claimed was the uh, the Redbirds were the toughest team. Uh, the, they put up the toughest fight against them. Uh, Auburn, Butler, another big one. Uh, when they went to Washington, Washington State was a very big matchup along with McNeese. Uh, Wisconsin and Marquette this past week, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, but then they get – the first two conference games were both sweeps. Now, Missouri State was the big one everyone was watching because – Missouri State, if you if you and none of you know this, um, Coach Johnson's former coach that you played under at Missouri State, um, played against you know coached against her um, last year, and the Rebels lost that in five sets and lost by a score in set five of fifteen to eleven. So it was a very close one. Uh, it was a very well fought matchup, very fun to watch in the stands. Uh, there for my opinion. actually, I was on the call with Mike Marr for that, but uh, the Rebels got payback and. They swept that game, and if you're Illinois State, that's the best way to start off conference play is to sweep the team that, you know, beat you in five sets the last time you played them. And, of course, Missouri State's going to be coming back home uh, or to play Illinois State at home, so that's going to be a really interesting one. Just looking at the score totals in the sets here, uh, in their last second matchup uh, in conference play, Southern Illinois, uh, where they also got the sweep. Twenty. This is just an example of how well the Redbirds play their opponents and uh, just keeping uh, playing strong, consistent uh, chemistry play volleyball. As uh, Coach Johnson prides herself on with good team chemistry uh, with her young women on the team there. So 25-22, uh, to 22, the Redbirds won set one. 25-18, to 18, set two, and a killer set three, 25 to 12 in the Redbird sweep of the Southern Illinois Salukis. That was the second game they played. That was Saturday. So they went to Missouri State, hopped on the bus, not too far of a trip over to Carbondale. And now we're going to look at the box score of the Missouri State matchup. Those are some close. The, the first one was very close. It was 25 to 20. The Redbirds won that. And then... 25 to 18, respectfully, sets two and three. We have a hello shout-out for me. It's my Aunt Patty from Florida. And hey, good to see you, Aunt Patty. Hope you're doing well. Can't wait to see you uh, this weekend. And um, a special happy birthday also goes out to uh, my grandfather this weekend. Uh, love her very much. Uh, she's a big supporter of my career. Me as a, you know, being your grandson. So that means nothing but the world to me. So uh, happy birthday, Grandma. I love you very much. And, uh, I'll be going home for that this weekend, so I'm very excited to go home uh, with my sisters, my family, my parents, uh, my Aunt Patty as well, my cousin Sean, who I haven't seen in the longest time. I can't wait to see him and uh, what he's been up to these days. But uh, just back to Illinois State Bible there. I had to give a special shout-out, though, to my grandma and uh, to my Aunt Patty. So, hello. Love you. Miss you. Um, and the Missouri State game, it's, uh, I'm excited to see what the Redbirds are going to do um, when they come to Collins Court. And – that's obviously a while away, but you got to prepare for it early. You know, you got to keep that mentality. And, you know, a 10-4 and four record, a 7-14 winning percentage, 2-0 and in conference, playing a two-game winning streak. Uh, and in a way, they respectively played a 500 record. And um, just, you know, just foreshadowing it, I think Illinois State is going to have to keep, keep it going here. You know, they have uh, Evansville coming uh, to town, their first uh, – conference home game of the season. And then the next day, uh, Saturday at 7 p.m., the, is uh, the same time as the first service Friday's game, they are playing Indiana State. And Indiana State has some pretty solid sports programs. Uh, you know, we've seen them in softball play pretty well against the Redbirds, basketball, especially on the men's side, and uh, football pretty closely. But uh, just looking at Evansville, Indiana State, uh, you and I, they go on the road and play in Drake now. And we saw that happen last year. Coach Johnson talked a lot about how uh, competitive those matchups are against teams like you and I and Drake, very uh, well-built volleyball teams, good coaching staffs. And that just shows uh, that the Redbirds are going to try and maybe bounce back from that this year against those two teams who played them so well because they have really solid newcomers. Like, as I mentioned before in the show, Kaylee Martin, uh, Taylor Lynch, Carly Nicholson, and that set five senior core. Uh, that's undoubtedly very important to this Redbirds team's future. You know, you have uh, Courtney Pence, Lexi Varga, and Lexi Wallen, and 
Allie Line, and Jordan Weatherless. And, of course, the assist item of Steph Jankowitz. Uh, so volleyball team is going to be really exciting. If you're on campus at Illinois State seeing this, you haven't seen volleyball before, or you just need something fun to do this weekend, go check out the Illinois State volleyball team. Friday night, 7 p.m., they have a special student giveaway of a student flag. They're also playing at 7 p.m. Saturday night. And you don't even need the red alert to get in. You just scan your ID if you're a student. Even if you're not a student, come down to Illinois State, check out a volleyball game, check out this great volleyball team, where my opinion is going to have a very big year. Now, answering some of the comments, my uh, my Aunt Patty says, my Uncle Mike says I'm doing great. I appreciate that, Uncle Mike. Love you very much. I uh, can't wait to see you too this weekend. And uh, shout out to your Saints. Alvin Kamara is doing a really good job. Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, who's a – very good receiver, in my opinion. They're doing pretty well. And we have some more. I love seeing the people popping up this late at night and enjoying the show here. Uh, Mr. Tim Stelfox and uh, my old soccer coach there, uh, Sarah Aguilar uh, from the SGA. Who do, they do an incredible job. I see how hard she works there. She does so well for that. So shout out to you, Sarah, for that. Uh, English Seegers, the Papa John's pizza lover over at from WZND is popping on to my show tonight on Facebook Live. Good to have you here, English. Miss you. We miss you at CD English. I'm just gonna say it. we. Miss, I'm gonna say it in English there. A little pun there uh, with the name, but uh, glad to have you all here tonight. And uh, my aunt Patty is asking, what will the Bears do to the Bucks? What will our Bears do to the Bucks this Sunday? I think the Bears are gonna win undoubtedly. Uh, the Bears defense is, as I mentioned earlier on here. Really solid. Khalil Mack was – now, whenever you trade two first-round picks for a player, you don't know what you're going to, you know, expect from it, you know, what those first-round picks might turn into in the next few years, and that's the risk of trading. So that's what's important here in the case of the Bears. Ryan Pace made the best move for the team future, and Khalil Mack's at that age where you can get a $41 million deal and be confident in it the way he's played, you know. Defensive player of the year back in 2016, I think he can get one this year. But I think Akeem Hicks is really good competition. The Bears fans, there's, uh, I like that, Mac Attack. Very good, FA. We're going we're gonna to refer to him as Mac Attack there. Or uh, uh, the player Aaron Rodgers never likes to play against. Uh, that's a good thing for Bears fans. But uh, I see, and this, I don't like to make score predictions all the time, but I'm going to go 28-7, to 7, the Bears over the Buccaneers. And uh, I got Mr. Bisky getting a lot more passing yards. Of course, getting the ball to Jordan Howard a little more like they did last week. You know, with this offense, you're just never knowing what to expect. And I have a special hello from English. Hi, English. Good to see you. Uh, I don't have any pizza here on the show, but uh, I could maybe try and use some the next time. I don't know. But um, I love seeing everyone on. And I'm just glad to have everyone here tonight. You know, I, I love doing this show. And for those that were just on, maybe didn't know it, I was in the newspaper. The show was in the newspaper today. And I'm going to let out a little surprise here in this episode. Today. Um, that's just a little secret for those. Uh, great people of you that have uh, tuned in tonight. You get to know about that. So uh, don't go sharing it around too much, but uh, that's a little secret for what I got cooking up on this next episode. Now, Illinois State Volleyball, or we're going to go into football, sorry. I'm just so excited about the volleyball season. I keep saying volleyball. Um, and I will actually be posting on my Facebook too, uh, those of you that have me on my regular Facebook page here. I will be on the call for a few volleyball play plays this year, so I'm very excited for that in my final semester here at Illinois State University to cover what is probably undoubtedly one of my favorite teams in Illinois State athletics. And the football team, they are 3-0 and now as they won on the road against Colorado State. Now, I now, I read about this two days ago, and – the football team had something big happen. They are now in the top 10 of the FCS poll after that FBS win. Now, just to recap the listeners and people here tonight on 
the scores of the uh, Redbird uh, 3-0 start. They won in their home opener, which was called play-by-play play at ZV by yours truly here. Um, that was a very fun call. Uh, they won that 46 to nothing uh, blowout bloodbath, and that offense was brought back home again against Eastern Illinois, uh, 48 to 10 win. Uh, the Rebels have a two-game winning streak so far against Eastern Illinois. As they beat them, the Rebels beat them on the road uh, at Eastern Illinois last year, and at Fort Collins, Colorado, this past Saturday, uh, that was a 2 p.m. kickoff that game. Uh, the Redbirds won 35 to 19. Now they came back from a little bit of a deficit there, but there's nothing but good things you can say about this team right now. Brock's back. He using his defensive experience. He had as a defensive coordinator back in his time at Purdue. You know, continuing to bring that to Illinois State in his first decade covering the team, and he uh, the offense has been what I'm really watching right now. And I was talking about it. If you haven't heard episode 18, you're gonna want to check that out. Joey Dwyer and I went some and some really good insight on the uh, Illinois State football. And just, you know, we talked about the football team, you know, where they're headed, what we expect them to head into. Uh, and a player I have watching the great offensive weapons uh, Brady Davis has at his disposal, James Robinson, Markel Smith, uh, the sophomore Jordan Birch, who's doing a really good job to this point. But – you know, even with Spencer's not receiver, uh, Tyler Pekovich at tight end, you know, they have a really set offense. You can almost compare them to the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Uh, that's a pretty good fair comparison there. Uh, Brady Davis got a little Patrick Mahomes arm there. But um, I uh, I have a comment about uh, my football calls. My aunt would like me to wear a uh, Redbird helmet. I wish I could, but I don't know how the mic would go through the helmet and uh, – I don't know if the football team would want me to do that. They, those players need their helmets. And uh, well, my sister agrees. My sister just joined. She agrees with that. So that's really an interesting one there. And we have my aunt Colleen tuning in as well. Good to have you on, Aunt Colleen. And uh, my good old buddy from WGD, Michael Donald. Just a shout out here. We are getting you an interview on the show very soon. Just got to find the right spot for you, buddy. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Michael Donald is uh, one of the many, many. Uh, well-known supporters of this show since it started, as many of you have, uh, which I greatly appreciate. And please uh, continue leaving your comments, likes, and episode 19, as I mentioned. I'm going to announce the date on Facebook like I usually do in a post. that will be coming up. And uh, I – hello to my sister, Katie. Hi. Um, but the football team, they have a uh, match on the road once again this Saturday. It's against Missouri State University in uh, Springfield, Missouri, and the next home game will be in October. So uh, the next home game won't be till October. It's October 6th. That's a 2 p.m. kickoff against Western Illinois. If you want to hear more about that, well, we can expect to see in that game. Tune in to Will's fifth quarter special, episode 19, next week when it's up. You're not going to want to miss that one, folks. And uh, – just going into some closing thoughts here, I could not be more excited about what's coming up here in sports. And the Chicago Bulls, just to talk about them a little bit, they had rankings out about, you know, maybe what team's going to do what, you know, uh, build teams and everything. The Bulls' big thing right now is defense, defense, defense. And they really need to work on that. And uh, Jimmy Butler's been in the headlines, wanting to get traded. Uh, the Rockets are uh, reportedly trying to get him. Phoenix, it's it's crazy, and I'm surprised a lot of Bulls fans are on social media saying, bring them back to Chicago, bring them back to Chicago. Uh, of course, that would never happen. That would take uh, the world ending to happen, but um, I'm just interested to see what will happen, and uh, I have a interesting shout-out. Uh, fellow Illinois I see this Saturday, so we wish them luck. So uh, there's a good shout-out to Tom and the uh, rugby team there. But um, the Bulls, now they have a starting five, the way it's looking right now. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. at center. Power forward, Larry Markkinen, who in my opinion is probably the greatest uh, star the Bulls will have long-term, along with, um, you know, the uh, new small forward back in the city of – uh, Chicago, good to have him back in Chi-Town. Mr. Jabari Parker. And then we got good old Zach Levine back, who was almost a Sacramento King. We're glad he didn't go over there. 
and uh, Chris Dunn. Now, just thinking about who the Bulls play first in preseason, they're facing the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, of course, we're going to talk about that a little more as that game comes up. Uh, you know, this weekend, you know, it'll uh, take place, and then we are going to, you know, recap it in episode 19 a little bit. So it's going to be a very loaded but uh, fun-filled episode 19. And as I mentioned, this Sunday, while you're watching the Bears in the afternoon, you can gear up for the Bulls' first preseason game of uh, 2018 in the United Center with uh, some new friendly faces. Antonio Blakeman, he's getting a chance uh, to play under an NBA contract with the team who he's just really come out of nowhere almost to this point. And, you know, he bounced out Jerry Grant, who is the – nephew of well-known bull who's with the organization Horace Grant so we didn't expect to see that happen and uh Mark Buccio's on uh my neighbor uh Mayor Marie's on and uh Ibrahim's on so good to have people tuning in later here in the episode as well I appreciate everyone tuning in whenever they're able to like this and uh just thinking about the Bulls right now I think they're they're gonna have an interesting season so I I appreciate that Marie thank you um but the question is the defense, but also I'm wondering how – now, of course, the team is practicing, so they're probably fitting in really well, staying connected, working outside of practice together. But you look at the preseason matchups here for the Bulls, and you have – I'm just going to go through it here. Uh, Pelicans, September 30th, October 3rd, Bucks, Hornets on October 8th. Then you have the Pacers, the Nuggets, the Sixers, the Pistons, the Mads, the Hornets, and the Hornets again, the Hawks. And you have nothing better – then the uh, Big Five Golden State Warriors at home on October 29th in your final preseason game. So that's a that's a, I don't know who schedules the preseason games, but uh, whoever schedules them, that's a really interesting finish to have there. And I am sadly closing out the show here. So uh, whoever hasn't tuned in episode 18, I recommend you do any of the early episodes from 1 to 18. Feel free to check them out. Uh, it's a lot of fun sports talk there, past and still coming up. So. There's two wills here. There's goodbye there. So if you haven't checked out that article, I have it linked on my Facebook, uh, courtesy of the vedette for putting that story together and in. And I believe her name was Kinsey Hudson that wrote it, so uh, thank you for that. And uh, this is sadly the end of the monthly Facebook Live of Will's Fifth Quarter Special. The next time you will hear me is with my next guest host, that is Isaac Missile, another one of my well-respected coworkers over at WZND. I've worked with so many great people there. Uh, especially some of the new team members that are coming in. I'm going to try and bring them on uh, throughout the semester as well here. So this is Will Farrell, a uh, very blessed young man to be uh, not just in the newspaper about this show, but doing this show for all of you, uh, even though it's not the pre-recorded ones you hear. Uh, but the Facebook Lives are a lot of fun for me to connect to all of you. I appreciate all the comments. Uh, those of you that have tuned in, it's incredible to have all of you here with me tonight. And uh, – this is sadly the end, but uh, fear not. You can tune in next week to episode 19, and, uh, of course, I'll be letting you all know when that's up and uh, what to look forward to with that. Uh, you know, check out the Twitter. I know a lot of you had uh, comments, thoughts, and everything, so hit up the Twitter, Tom, uh, Michael D, and Patty, uh, just anyone that had thoughts. So uh, hit up that. You know, hit up my Facebook timeline with some of those, and uh, – Hashtag it with Will's fifth quarter special. So you're going to want to hashtag it like this. I'm going to put it in the comment section. Post on Twitter and Facebook. And Facebook. And in the conversation. You heard it there first, and uh, the bad types got to make sure I spell it right there. But uh, join the conversation. So, for all of you that have tuned in tonight, I am eternally grateful for that. I look forward to putting together a great episode 19 next week for all of you to enjoy. Look, get excited! Mark Rowe's coming back. Real great sports guy there, and a surprise second choice. Uh, Guest appearance is in the works for all of you. So for myself, uh, the Rocky poster there in the back, Rocky shirt in there, Rocky fever today, uh, and uh, good old Florida Kingsley here. So 
from Will Farrell, I am uh, had a good time with all of you tonight on this. So, uh, you know, share this video with uh, people that uh, you know, people that love the sport that you know of. And uh, once again, a, a shout out to uh, my grandma Farrell, who's uh, one of the best grandmothers and uh, people in my life. I uh, love you very much and uh, happy 80th birthday coming up this weekend, Graham. Love you. And uh, I'll be going home soon. And uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Those are the platforms. And uh, so long from Will's Fifth Quarter Specials, Multi-Facebook Live. Have a good night, folks.